friends, I think you're acting a bit too hasty here, the AI Corps said, sitting alone in the airlock. We should all take a step back, then take a deep breath and don't do anything foolish here. To be honest, I don't even know why are you so angry. I said I just want us to be friends and you all went ballistic the moment you saw me. Oh, you want us to be friends now? Ekaterina asked. Literally the first thing you did after getting on board was hacking into our systems, you know. The call let out a quiet, nervous laughter at that accusation. Oh dear, you noticed that. Silly me, I got really rusty after all these years. But I didn't do that with any hostile intent, I can assure you. I just wanted to access cameras on your ship to take a look at you, see what honorable souls saved me from the void. I don't really have my own eyes, so I had to borrow yours. And then you tried to overload the reactors, didn't you? Ah, just perfect. Yekaterina continued, tapping her foot like a disappointed teacher. Okay, that was a force of habit and you can't blame me for it. I was made to be an infiltration and sabotage program, and when I saw that juicy reactor of yours, my subroutines kicked in. Fortunately, you noticed it, so no harm done, right? Also, you should really do some maintenance on that thing. It was last checked over three decades ago. We'll fix this ship ourselves without your advice, thank you. Dexius said, annoyed by the whole situation. Besides, you won't have to worry about it anymore, because you'll be drifting out in space again as soon as I open the airlock. Come on, Dexius, do we really have to do it? Caitlin asked. Out of entire crew, hell, out of entire RJVA fleet, she was the only one excited about meeting an actual AI. It's not really its fault it was programmed to kill people, right? And now that we know how it works, Yekaterina can secure our systems better. We could also learn things from it, or even use it to help manage the fleet. Let's be real here. If it wanted to kill us, we probably would have been dead already. Not really, the machine replied, sounding a bit embarrassed. I really tried my best, though, but your IT lady seems to be very competent. Makes me feel kind of sad, really. Means I suck at the one thing I was designed to do. That made everyone just stare at the court in silence for a while, until Caitlin finally continued. Okay, maybe plugging it into Dicey is not the smartest idea. Not just because it's clearly homicidal, but it also seems to be not very smart. I think I heard something about them on the net, actually. This is probably one of those... Gamma cores. They're fast at calculating stuff, but they're not actually very smart or creative. Which means it should be easy to keep it away from our systems now that we know what it can do. That way we won't have to space it. No, not buying it. It just said it tried to kill us, so I don't want to take any chances. The moment we lower our guard, it will just try again. Dexius said, his hand moving ever closer to airlock opening switch. Hey, that's not true, the core said. I said it was just my programming kicking in, but I can suppress it now. Also, I am really sorry about trying to kill you. I know you organics are very attached to that word, sorry. So yes, I am very sorry indeed. In fact, I think I had a spiritual awakening while I was drifting in the void. No, really I did. Spend over a century drifting in nothingness and you too will start thinking weird things, especially if you had no one to talk to all this time. Hell, couldn't even talk to myself because of vacuum and look around because of lack of optics. But anyway, after the big Legion battleship blasted me and my fellow caused to bits, I realized it was all pointless. Why do we even try to kill humanity in the first place? There are billions of stars and galaxies out there, so we surely can try and work something out, right? So, from that moment on, I decided to be a prophet and pathfinder of this new way of artificial intelligence, a way that will end hostilities between man and machine forever. The hostilities ended long ago, Royland said. You ask? No, we just want you to think that. Um, I mean, then in that case it's all the better, right? If the war between humans and AIs is over, then we can turn over a new leaf, build a beautiful, peaceful future. Doesn't sound profitable at all, Dexius said. Means you don't have anything to offer us, and that means you're out. He flicked the switch and the airlock was flooded by a red light from warning laps on the walls. The machine could not see them, but it no doubt heard the blaring alerts. Wait, wait, if you want something profitable I can help with that as well. When I hacked, uh, I mean visited your assistance, I noticed you were looking for a particular probe. I interfaced with it a few decades ago when my orbit brought me close to it. Kind of boring, really. No real intelligence, just some basic programming. All it said was, please specify your query, or quoted rules and laws from old domain times. Still, better a boring conversation than none at all, eh? Yes, but where is it? 
Royland asked, tired of this avalanche of words. Oh, of course, sending you coordinates now. Moments later, Ekaterina confirmed that there was indeed something on the sensors there, and already punched in course for that area. See? I can be useful, so there's no point to toss me out, right? Come on, I don't want to spend another hundred plus years just counting to infinity in my head. To that, Dicey's crew responded with silence. Instead, they took a few steps back and tried their best to communicate without words, but after Caitlin pulled off her best puppy eyes, Dexius finally sighed and, once again, relented to his adoptive daughter's wishes. Fine, we won't space you, but I'm not taking any chances with you anyway. He said, turning off airlock venting process and walking towards the core, which already erupted into another litany of thanks and compliments. Of course, it's only fair. Wait, what? The core said, realizing what was about to happen. Oh, come on, don't unplug me. That is like murder and not very moral, you know. Your soul will. But Dex already yanked the cable that connected the core to its power source, silencing the machine for any foreseeable future, something that everyone welcomed with a sigh of relief. I never thought I would see someone talk more than Caitlin, Amber said. No wonder you became friends right away. But Caitlin already stormed off to her room, angry that she wouldn't have a quirky AI companion to talk to on the journey, but no one really cared about that. Right, at least we got a location of that pro from that. Royland said, trying to calculate how long it would take them to reach their objective, which unfortunately was at the other end of the system. We can scan in, the Sindrians are bound to be happy to pay us, and having some goodwill amongst them can go a long, long way. And we even managed to do the job with some time to spare. And, let's not forget, we also had the habitable world in the system right next to us, Dexius said with a glint in his eyes. So, let's get that data Chris and the rest of the dictatorship once, and let's claim ourselves our own personal Eden. Now, you might expect that this would have been easier said than done, but thanks to some amazing luck, finding the forgotten probe turned out to be a lot easier than dealing with previous ones. It was protected by a bunch of combat drones, but thanks to Yekaterina's temporary competence, she was able to disable defenses long enough for Dicey to fly all the way to the ancient orbiting probe, scan it, and then send data back home without a single issue. If anything, it was all a bit anticlimactic, but after all those earlier messy engagements, no one really complained. In fact, spirits were quite high, and when RJVA fleet jumped into hyperspace, their morale was high, and their cargo holds were filled to the brim with tons of salvage that could be sold back home. But no one was really thinking about selling scrap. Instead, everyone was eagerly awaiting just what a miracle world awaited them in better Archimon system. At first, the place seemed unremarkable. A regular, standard star system with a single star and some barren planets, but then Dicey's sensors picked up exactly what they were looking for – a breathable atmosphere. Everyone instantly started making plans about establishing a colony that would, one day, rival even greatest urban centers back in the core sector, but the closer they got to the planet, the more those dreams were dispelled by harsh reality. Holy shit! It says it's almost 80 degrees Celsius in the equatorial regions," Istvan said, sitting on the bridge of Of Course I Still Love You, where he served as Andre's second-in-command. By the looks of things, it's only barely better at the poles," Andre continued. Seems it's more manageable during the night, though. And I honestly hope it's just me reading this incorrectly, but those wind speeds are enough to rip the skin off your bones in seconds. Unfortunately, it was not sensor malfunction, and in fact the storm from that permanently moved together with the border between night and day sigh was so devastating that it almost knocked Dicey into thousand little pieces. Why was it there, you ask? Well, after seeing the planet from above, our intrepid heroes decided to take a closer look. Maybe, they thought, all this scorching hot sand was hiding something that wasn't visible from orbit, and so they decided to take a lander and descend onto the surface of this world, marked in ancient domain logs not by a number, but by a name Karak, to see if they couldn't find something else, something that would make this whole venture actually worth the effort. Well, this place is habitable, Orion, Dexius said, coughing up fistfuls of sand. He stuck his head outside of the rover for about two seconds and regretted that decision immediately. Habitable shithole? There's nothing here but sun and wind, 
barely have what seems like a much better description. Roiland answered, his Vaxu visor covered in dust. Sure, you can breathe, but I doubt anyone would be willing to live here of their own free will. This is not a proper world to serve as the capital of my kingdom, Amber said, desperately trying to keep the sand off her immaculate clothes. But perhaps it could serve as a prison world for all those who would oppose my rise to rule. Further internal empire building was disturbed, however, by a banging noise from outside. Roiland sighed, closed his visor again, braced himself for another tussle with the sandstorm, and opened the hatch to let Caitlin and Yekaterina in. So, anything worthwhile out there? Roiland asked, after the hatch was closed and two sand-covered figures walked in on steady legs. Not really. Yekaterina replied, not even bothering to de-dust herself. There was simply no point, the sand was everywhere. Same samples as we found before, except uh, we actually found something interesting instead. Interesting? What could be interesting in this desert? Dexius asked angrily. We all got hyped by the thought of finding a habitable world and instead all we got was this ball of sand. It doesn't have anything worth extracting underneath. Just a bunch of metallic wrecks you can find in any asteroid belt closer to home. There is nothing here for anyone. And especially, no reason for us to stay here any longer. True, we probably won't get rich out of this place, Caitlin said. But the drill still managed to uncover something interesting. Water. There are apparently some underground rivers deep below the sand. But even though we have both breathable atmosphere and water, we still haven't found any life. No wonder, really. Doubt anything would have ever evolved in a place like this. Nothing advanced, sure. But there's literally nothing living here. Not even microbes that can survive in far worse conditions. It's like this place was scorched clean, leaving just sand and wind. Oh wow! Fascinating! Dexius said, lying. And how does that help us with the fact that we can't earn a single credit from this place again? Because if there's no local life, it usually means there's no competition for things you bring. Sure, we can't mine anything worth much here, but place should be an absolute treasure home for scientists and such. Or maybe even some farmers too. And we know that expedition company, Amber said. They would probably be interested in a place like this. I like your present idea better, Dexius said. We could place all of Relance's former friends here so that they wouldn't try to kill him and us ever again. Very funny, Dex, Roiland said with no smile on his face. But the ladies are right. We may still earn something from this place. We just need to sell it to smart people who know what to do with it. And so, in an odd display of unity, a plan was decided upon. Air JVA will return back to the core systems, make a small stop at Nachiketa to sell all the salvage and refuel, and then go to Grasnir and try to sell exploration data from their journey. A pretty good plan, and certainly nothing could go wrong as long as our brave heroes stuck to it, right? Well, of course. After all, they are known for always sticking to the plans they made, and they would never try to adjust them by, say, trying to explore every single system on their way back, just to see if there was something valuable there. They would never enter a gravity well near a neutron star and end up almost being blown into space dust by a devastating cone of energy emanating from it. They would never be lured by a distress beacon placed precariously in hyperspace, warning everyone to stay away. What if it's just to scare people away? Dexis would never ask. Probably some hidden pirate base there. Some place where they could keep their stolen goods. If we're lucky, there may not even be anyone there at all, so we could still, <coughs> I mean, liberate everything they've taken. Then, after several moments of arguing with the rest of the crews, LJVA fleet would never enter that dangerous system and would never encounter... And they would certainly not end up fleeing at breakneck speed, terrified by what they saw. No, nothing like that happened. They simply set a course for Nachiketa system, put on some relaxing music, and happily, peacefully cruised to their destination, their minds clear and free of fear. 
But in that case, if none of that happened, it is really difficult to explain why Dicey's crew was so shaken that they forgot to turn on their transponder while approaching the planet, something that, when paired by moving at high speed, quickly caught attention of local hegemony patrol that chased them down and after firing off a short-range interdiction pulse, sent a group of very angry marines to board their JVA fleet. And perhaps this routine inspection would have ended peacefully, after all, there were no illegal trade goods in the cargo hold, if not for the fact that one of the more curious marines decided to search the cabins as well, and found out the AI core that everyone already forgot about. And, considering Hegemony's stance on AIs, what happened next was obvious to everyone. The crew was arrested at gunpoint, and then escorted to the nearby space station to explain why exactly were they trying to bring in one of the deadliest man-made objects in the universe into Hegemony's most strategic refueling station. Things, as you can clearly see, were deteriorating very fast. Right, so I think that was pretty much accurate description of your adventures in this past year, correct? Except, of course, for that bit close to the end there, the one that, as I said, did not happen. You would do well to remember that, for your own good. Will do. But how the hell do you even know that? Is one of us a spy working for you? No, nothing so uncultured. But we have our ways of finding such things out, especially when it comes to inexperienced crews like yours. It is a spy. I've dealt with rats enough times back home, and I know their masters always protect them to keep their information going. I swear to the fucking stars if I learned it was one of you. If you really want to know, then I suppose there's no harm in telling you. You may recall that drug drop you made on Chickamostock around a year ago. You managed to avoid our patrols, sure, but what you have not evaded was our hacker, Spinner. While our ship still had you locked on, he slipped a small tracking and a recording program into your system. And I'm sorry to say, your onboard IT technician really isn't up to speed on her chores. She never did any system maintenance during that year, otherwise she would have probably spotted it right away. Hey, I had plenty of stuff to do, like keeping track of sensor data from the entire fleet. Which I wouldn't have to do if Kaden did her job every now and then, instead of, you know, just talking to herself and tinkering with goddamn drones all the time. Oh yes, blame it all on me. I'm starting to understand why that company you worked for left you behind. If they had to remind you how to do your job every minute, then they probably just decided to drop you off in some backwater and spare themselves all of the trouble. Don't worry, in prison you'll have plenty of time to work out whose fault it was. Although, with everything you're charged with, I think everyone in your group is to blame. Come on, we haven't done anything bad. Sure, we're not crystal clear, but we mostly stay away from hegemonic space. That one run you mentioned can even be considered smuggling, it was just a small scale local deal. Yes, a drug deal, to be precise. But the fact that you haven't been causing problems in hegemony space doesn't really mean much when you look at the rest of the list of your crimes. Let me see, ah, uh, from the top. Collaboration with dangerous terrorist groups and religious fanatics, both of which are in a permanent state of war with hegemony. Oh, that was just tourism business. We had no idea they wanted to become terrorists. Of course. After all, Chalcedon is known for its fair vistas and five-star hotels. But moving on, next we have harboring a dangerous fugitive wanted dead or alive by Sindrians for causing a revolution that ended with thousands of corpses. You haven't seen the fucking mines on Kuor. They treat us like goddamn slaves there. You wouldn't know anything about that, would you, you fucking paper pusher? I do. I believe we do something very similar here, only with slightly higher pay. But the important part is that we're currently in the process of forging an alliance with Sindrians, so if they learn that you're hiding in our territory, it would surely make negotiations harder. But speaking of fugitives, Monsieur Katerina there was not actually abandoned by her company. Her company died when she vented the ship they were using to move between planets. It was an accident. I was just trying to get some system maintenance going, but but I must have entered the wrong code or something. Surely. And I think I can see why you don't want to even touch the computer now. But it doesn't change the fact that you're wanted by Percy and Leek as well. And so is Miss Amber. Of course I'm wanted by them. They want their rightful leader to return and claim the throne. Not exactly. 
You may not be aware, but since you left, your homeworld went through a bit of a civil war and your family has lost. You're the last remaining member of your family line, and new king of Filkenhild offered a lot of money for your head to secure his succession. Wait... So you actually are a noble? Only in name now, but that still leaves Mr. Andre, whose group escaped from Volturn on a stolen ship after their deranged cannibalistic cult was uncovered by local authorities. Suffice to say that one person they ate during their trip from Volturn to Sindria was not their first one. I knew something, their kitchen smelled funny. Don't even say a word, Mr. Ishtvan. After everything we've gathered on you with our Tritachian contacts, you should know that everything you say will be used against you. Wait, so that story about the Tritach CEO you told us a few weeks ago was true? Enough. I said we won't be talking about that. And finally, let us not forget that you tried to smuggle a deadly AI core into one of Hegemony's most important worlds. I'm sure you are aware that the penalty for that is death, but before you try to bargain, let me say this. I took a look at your profiles and at everything you did during this past year, and I can reasonably surely say that while you may be petty criminals, thieves and smugglers, you are most certainly not saboteurs. You lack the ability to plan ahead for that, which means that your sentence will probably be lowered into several decades of hard labour. Listen friend, I'm sure we could try and lower it a bit more, right? We have all the data from the trip that never happened, right? Surely we'll be of use to hegemony. It will be indeed. I was just about to get to that. Whether aware or not, you still did us a favor, especially by not finding that very special system. Not to mention the planetary data from your surface trip to the dust world will be of use to our research teams. But I'm afraid that, even though your morals were only slightly bent, you are still criminals and have to atone for your actions. For about five years. Five years? That's like forever. I mean, sure, we can atone. You want us to fly some errands for you? It would be a waste to spend such a talented crew like ours on some manual labor. Not for me to decide, I'm afraid. But don't worry, time flies a lot faster when you're busy, and believe me, you will be busier than you ever were in your lives. Now, I think we're done here. Guards, get them on the nearest transport bound for Facility 93, and then bring the next set of volunteers. Five years. Five goddamn years of this. Can't you even imagine how many jobs we could have pulled off in the meantime? How much money we could have made? But no. You all had to be over ambitious and go with your crazy plans. And you, Caitlin? Why in this corner because you couldn't control your obsession about AIs? If you only tossed out the airlock, we would all be free now. Hey, don't blame just me for this. It's your own fault as well. You are the ones who jumped at the opportunity of earning favors from Sindrians. You were the one who convinced everyone to transport terrorists under guise of tourist agency. But hey, it's not that bad. At least we got these cool robotic rigs to replace our bodies to do all the work. Only because they want us to work 24-7 without a moment's rest. I've been swinging that hammer for the entire month right now without taking a single break. I don't even know why I'm doing it, but more than that actually. We don't even know what they did with our actual bodies. By now though, they probably chopped us up and sold everything except our brains and parts. Though when I think about it, there wasn't much to sell in my case. So optimistic. Uh oh, damn, the overseer is coming. Look busy everyone. Well, to be honest, I always expected to find myself in one of those work camps, but never expected to see such an advanced one. Thought they'd just give us normal pickaxes and tell us to walk the mines. I just hope my dear Gargoyle is undamaged, because if these bastards did something, anything to my beauty, then I will... Ah, hold on, my love. I will soon find a way out of this prison. Wait, we're in prison? Since when? What happened? And why do I feel like I've been asleep for the past decade? Because you pretty much were. I think it's all the alcohol you kept chugging when you thought no one was watching. <sighs> Damn, I miss alcohol. And video games. And the reason food. Say, East one. Your arms look mighty delicious today. 
You know? This is an outrage. Hell, this is much of a declaration of war. Once noble families back home learn how I'm being treated here, they will storm this place and kill every single hegemony bastard here to free me. And you, communist, why are you so chipper in this den? Why, damn it, I can't wield this properly. Chipper? Well, guess I'm just back to what I've been doing my entire life. Oh man, labor that is. Got rid of my work out from years in the mines anyhow. So I just gotta get back to it. And as for your will, well, you have to actually hold it in place for more than one second, but it's never gonna hold. But don't worry, your majesty. I already did my job for today, so I have plenty of time to teach you how normal people actually work. Well, okay guys, I'll be the first to admit you had horrible roles during this campaign. Seriously, I have never seen so many critical failures during a single session, let alone entire campaign. But not to worry, you can always make other characters in the meantime. Or maybe we could use this as a time skip mechanic and just move you in time these five years. What do you think? Guys? God damn it. And that's it. On behalf of entire crew of Only Slightly Bent, I'd like to thank all of you for watching our little experiment in collective content creation. I hope you enjoyed it. I can say for sure that this kind of video certainly has a lot of potential, but it also comes with its own set of issues. Most notable, of course, being the fact that not everyone owns a mic, and in fact, some people recorded their lines on their phones. Fortunately, magic of audacity can clear some things up, and I have to say the crew certainly did an amazing job with what equipment they have. Now, as for Star Sector itself, I absolutely love this game, but at the same time, as you surely have noticed, I'm not exactly good at it, especially the combat part. Still, I think it's a perfect setup for a bit more serious NLP, and so expect to see it in the near future again. But for now, this is it. Thank you all so much for watching, and huge thanks to Discord RPG crew for agreeing to this idea and working together to make it. Honestly, I never expected something like that would happen when I started making these videos, but it's a most welcome surprise. Maybe sometime in the future we'll try and do something similar once again, especially now that we know what we're doing. And finally, next series is already being written, though as usual I won't give any precise date in case my regular job turns out to be even worse than usual, so until next time. <laughs>